Hi, I'm Noel Vestal, and welcome to Prevail's Compliance Corner. Orly, are you going to introduce yourself? What are you doing? Sorry, people don't know, but it's lunchtime here, and I'm eating. I'm eating. D-O-D -D alphabet soup. It is the best. <laughs> you think I'm laughing. I'm, I, I'm Orly. I'm the marketing director here at Prevail, and today's show is going to be all at Prevail Compliance Corner is going to be all about DOD alphabet soup. You know, all those fun three and four letter acronyms that litter the DOD. And so we're going to uh, go through a bunch of them and define them for you. So, you know, you guys can make this a game. Those of you who uh, are out in TV land and want to try and see how well you know these terms, you can stop this video right now and check all the terms in the show notes, see how many you know, and then listen to the show. Or you can hit pause whenever we bring up the next term and see if you can define it correctly before Noel gives you the answer. So many ways for people to play. I hope I get them right. I know. That would be really bad. Like if you host a show and you don't even know the term, they just say, ah, run <laughs> by. See you later. All right. Let's go through the next for the first term. It is SMB. What is an SMB, Noel? I'll pause for a second. Dun, 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 dun. That's is a small to medium business. So that it, there is about 80,000 of them that work with the DOD. That uh, needs particularly uh, to protect CUI. There's yeah. like roughly 200,000 total. I think it's actually more, yeah, I think it's even more than that now, but yeah. The, sorry, so you're right. The ones that have to protect CUI. Right. All right, did you guys get it? Let's see how, if you got that one, keep on playing. Here's the next one. Ooh, the dib. The Which dib. Is, which is where all those small to medium businesses live. The live DIB, in the DIB is the defense industrial base. So it's basically the group of all of the different organizations that work directly with the Department of Defense. All right. Doing well. So Next far, one. So good. Ooh, CUI and FCI. This is a good one. This is one we what should definitely that? all know. So CUI is controlled unclassified information. And then FCI is federal contract information. So it's two different levels, but you have to protect them both. So it's basically sensitive information to put it very, very, very generally. Right. And CUI is what you see in level two. FCI is what you see in level one of CMMC. Correct. And speaking of CUI, NIST. Oh, NIST. Who knows what NIST is? Oh, I do. I do. So NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technologies. Ooh, I'm so glad I got that. Give and that girl a prize. Uh, I know I should get a prize. 800-171 specifically deals with the security of CUI and controlled unclassified information. All right. So if we speak about NIST, like if you give a mouse a cookie, you're going to have to talk about? CMMC. Yes, cybersecurity maturity model. Yes, that is... That is one that is on everybody's mind, and I'm sure everybody You forgot knows. the certification. Oh, Cybersecurity maturity model certification. So Thank yeah, you. I'm here for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. Not just to eat soup. So no. C CMMC, I think everybody probably is aware of what it is, but to give you very high level, it is one of the newer um, cybersecurity frameworks, and everyone in the DIB is going to have to eventually be responsible for it as part of their contracts. <gasps> All right, so CMMC, what's next? ITAR. ITAR. ITAR is, yeah, so that is, I believe it's International Traffic and Arms Regulations. I think that's right. That's a trick yeah. for me. Yeah. I never remember what a lot of these mean. <laughs> so who has to follow ITAR? So it, uh, anybody who has any sort of distribution of defense and space-related services and goods so uh, specifically, it's, it's usually dealing with some kind of arms, like if you're, you know, building guns or tanks or something like that, then you're going to have ITAR data. All right. Next, DFAR 7012. If you love NISC, you're going to love DFAR 7012. going to love DFAR 7012 because, you know, we got to make it as interesting as possible. So right. DFAR is the Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation Supplements. I think that's right. Yeah. And 7012 specifically deals with the mandate. It, it's been since December of 2017, where pretty much every contract that's come out with the DOD has a DFAR 7012 clause that specifically states that you have to be NIST 800-171 compliant, like we just talked about before, 
And also it deals with cloud service providers being FedRAMP and CMMC as well. So there's a FIPS is FIPS is all an overlap. Place. Lots, lots of, yeah, there's a lot of overlap between CMMC and, and DFARS, definitely, which is why people get so confused because it does kind of mesh on top of each other. Right. So FIPS is, that's the tricky one. That is the Federal Information Processing Standard. There we go. Uh, 140-2 specifically talks about cryptographically protecting things. So um, if you need to encrypt any sort of like information in transit and that sort of thing, FIPS is where he, FIPS 140-2 comes into play. All right, another defarge term here. Goodness, Whew. Let's see if I can do this. Are you are what? you sweating yet? I believe it. <laughs> it's a I lot mean. of things to remember. Uh, FedRAMP Moderate is the Federal Risk in Authorization Management Program, Authorization Management Program. There we go. I got very close. So essentially, and and moderate just means there are two. There are three different levels. There's low and moderate, and then high it depends on what kind of information you're having to house. It specifically applies to cloud service providers who are either, so if you are FedRAMP moderate and you have an ATO, which is, an, oh, that's another alphabet soup right there. An oh my gosh, that's a bonus one. A bonus one, authority to operate. Um, if you are a CSP, cloud service provider, so many alphabet soups, and you have an ATO with the government, then you are you are going to have to get checked off as FedRAMP moderate uh, by an individual assessment organization, but you can also be FedRAP moderate equivalent, meaning that you are a CSP, for example, like Prevail, who does not have direct um, contracts with the government, but we do actually have a lot of customers who do, so we have to at least be equivalent. So that's a very long explanation of it. No, but that's great because, uh, you know, you have DFARS that says all these things that you have to have for your cloud service provider. Mm -hmm. What if there are things you can't meet? Then what do you do? Ah, then you have a... Poem. Poem is poem? plan of actions and milestones. Yeah, you so, better know that one, girlfriend. Oh, I like in my sleep. So uh, plan of action and milestones is very much what it sounds like. It's what are your intended actions to fix the things that may you may be having some gaps or some issues with. If there are different security structures or controls that you're not really 100% meeting, you would put in a poem in place, tracking everything you're doing to get that up to up to snuff. All right. And all of this goes into the SSP yeah. system security plan. I better know that one too. Um, a system security plan. Yeah, you're fired if you don't. <laughs> I really, I really shouldn't be doing this job. Um, a system security plan is exactly what it sounds like. It is a, it's a group of all of your security information and all of your plans and procedures that you have for security, specifically talking about IT security, but there's also physical security in there, risk assessment, incident response. I mean, there's, there's training in there too. There's a lot of different pieces and, and parts and puzzles to it, but it really should be kind of overarching for your whole security framework. All right. Um, another part of your SSP the CRM. So that is customer responsibility matrix. So that is something that whatever S or whatever CSP cloud service provider or even MSP managed service provider that you use will likely have a, a like bonus terms. I know, right? We well, kind of have to throw them in there to explain this stuff. So a CRM customer responsibility matrix essentially just breaks down what you are primarily responsible for and what your CSP or MSP is primarily responsible for. Like what things can you inherit from them is really the goal of it. Okay. Uh, so who is going to be auditing all of this stuff? It could be. Someday, someday <laughs> it will be the C3PAO. So a C3PAO is a certified third party assessor organization. That isn't, there's only, I think six of them right now, but um, that have been approved by the DIB. They have not started doing assessments yet because there's still some training they have to do with the CMMCAB that hasn't been completed yet. Once that happens, C3 PAOs will be able to go out into the DIB and anyone who needs to get a level one, level two, or level three assessment based on what kind of information they have in the CMMC universe, a C3 PAO will be able to do that. All right. Speaking of compliance. As we always are. All right. RP and RPO. So an RP is somebody like me. I, for example, am an RP, which is called a registered practitioner. It means someone who has gone through the training and taken all the tests involved to understand CMMC at a, a bit deeper level. An RPO is a registered practitioner organization. That organization is one that can do consulting work with you. One of the things to remember about CMMC and really most auditing situations, the people who are doing your consulting and helping you get ready for an audit can't also do your audit. So an right. RPO can help you get ready for that audit, 
a C3 PAO can actually do the audit. And there are a lot of RPOs and C3 PAOs that kind of cross over where there are companies who have both options. But even if they have both certifications, they cannot be the ones who do your consulting and then also do your, your auditing. You have to have a different one for each. So if you're an RPO, does that mean your employees have to be RPs? No, not necessarily. You do have to have a set number of them, but not all of them. Okay. It's a good question. Last, last one. An OSC, that is an organization seeking certification. So those OSCs are the ones who are going to work with those RPOs and work with those C3PAOs. An OSC is basically anybody in the DIB who's looking for some additional assistance so that they can get to the CMMC certification. So they're called OSCs because they are seeking certification. Noel, do you know how many we just went through? I think we went how through many? about 15. And then there were all these bonus ones. So what was your score, people listening to this at home? How many did you get after get out of 18 or 15? Put your score down in the comments. Would love to hear how many of these terms you knew. Um, this is kind of like the introductory course. Before you start learning about learning about us compliance, you need a need to watch the show. Definitely. It'll definitely right. help give you a little leg up. All right, no, no, well, this has been great. I'll let you know how what my family thinks of the rest of this DOD <laughs> alphabet soup. I really hope I don't have to eat it all myself. I hope it's actually that great anyway. <laughs> Thanks. All right. See you next time. Bye. Bye.